Now, it's, of course, a somber universe, uh, anniversary, the Guantanamo Bay prison opening. But it raises a lot more issues about this society and where we are as a country and where we're going as a country that I'd like to bring up with our next guest. Uh, I want to bring into this conversation Jason Leopold. He's the lead investigative reporter for Truthout.org. And uh, Jason, you know, I've been looking through sort of the old clips of uh, having you on the program, and we always love having you on. But it seems like time Thank after you time, um, you know, we have these discussions with you on one Guantanamo anniversary or another, and very little changes in terms of the actual discourse or debate. So instead of doing the stereotypical, regular, uh, you know, Obama failed to fulfill his promise of closing that prison uh, segment, and I don't want to absolve the president from failing to fulfill that promise, um, let's talk a little bit more about what Guantanamo's existence means for this country and how, in my view at least, it, it seems like it's almost been normalized uh, among us as a society. What's your take? That's exactly right. In fact, it's, uh, it's, it's very sad that the public more or less has tuned Guantanamo out, has tuned out uh, uh, widespread human rights abuses that continue to take place in Guantanamo. Uh, I, I try to impress this upon uh, people time and again. Indefinite detention, which uh, your reporter spoke about in that segment, uh, is a human rights abuse. It is uh, an issue. Uh, an abuse that we condemn other governments for. However, uh, what's happening now is that we have come to accept uh, indefinite detention. We have accepted the fear-mongering uh, uh, that, that has taken place in the floors of Congress by Democrats and Republicans as just you know normal course of, uh, 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 of doing business, if you will, in Washington. Uh, and so Guantanamo truly does represent uh, the normalization, as, as you mentioned, of, of what uh, we will see going forward. I, I think that people are willing to accept it now. Uh, it doesn't affect them. Let's face it, they look at this as uh, an issue that uh, they do not need to be concerned about because uh, they still see uh, the majority of people there uh, as terrorists, even though we have seen evidence surface over the years that the vast majority uh, were in fact innocent. But I also think that it's important to state that we have a number of, uh, a number, which is we have tens of thousands of people in prisons in the United States as well who uh, are uh, being tortured uh, in, psychologically with uh, uh, solitary confinement. That, that's not something that we find ourselves very concerned about as, uh, either. Well, it's easy and, and almost, you know, sadly understandable in some ways uh, that, that people wouldn't really be concerned about something that they don't see that's not in their everyday lives. It doesn't really affect uh, them right there and then. But I think the problem to me, it seems, uh, and I'd like to get your take on this, is that uh, we are slowly, step by step, trending towards a situation where more and more of these laws, these uh, uh, normalized behaviors are now uh, essentially applying to U.S. citizens, or at least uh, legally there is the opening for, for U.S. citizens to get caught up in this web of the uh, sort of uh, uh, lack of uh, due right and due process. Talk a little bit about where, um, where you see that going and how actual Americans, not just those who are already in prison and you know, possibly uh, dealing with uh, you know, isolated uh, detention and whatnot, talk about how this could actually impact uh, Americans if, if these kinds of laws continue to sort of be implemented and take place? Sure. Well, you, you, first of all, you need to go back to uh, immediately after 9-11. I mean, look at the Patriot Act. That's a law. That's a law that does affect U.S. citizens. Uh, we have seen evidence in the uh, a whistleblower uh, case uh, involving uh, the CIA uh, in which uh, uh, journalists have, uh, have found their uh, communications being monitored. Uh, the Patriot Act is, is a very important example because, first of all, Congress continues to reauthorize it, uh, and nobody makes any noise about it. And uh, the, the laws continue to change in such a way that uh, people, the public, uh, are truly just willing to accept it. But the reason that they're willing to accept it, and I think that this is really uh, important, is that it, it comes down to politics. It comes down to a certain segment of the public does not want to criticize 
the Obama administration or Democrats for fear of uh, giving power, if you will, to uh, Republicans. There's this, this nonsense that's constantly communicated but you really, uh, Jay, I'm circles. sorry to interrupt you there. You really think that partisan politics would be um, the thing that, that's preventing people who actually do understand these developments from speaking out? I mean, that sounds shocking to me. Absolutely. I absolutely uh, see that. I believe it. And uh, I have uh, ex experienced it. I can tell you that uh, oftentimes when I will write a story uh, about uh, civil liberties issues that are critical of the administration, critical of policies that are being implemented that further, uh, where, where civil liberties uh, are further eroded uh, as a result, uh, there's criticism by uh, individuals on, on uh, social networking platforms such as Twitter, for example, who directly communicate with me and, and say that you realize that uh, uh, this will result in Newt Gingrich getting elected, something ridiculous uh, such as that. Well, Jason, and um, while it does seem... Uh, sorry to interrupt you there. You brought up Newt Gingrich. Uh, we're just running out of time, and I actually want to bring up a, a, a separate sort of uh, uh, point of discussion into this conversation. Now, earlier you talked about um, sort of the hypocrisy issue that's raised by Guantanamo. We often uh, criticize other countries for uh, torture, for indefinite detention, for behaviors that we uh, ourselves commit. Um, when it comes to the issue of Iran and targeted assassinations, for example, um, it seems like there is a little bit of a doublespeak there, too. Now, I want to play you two uh, sound bites from uh, our. Uh, uh, two uh, GOP White House contenders. Let's take a listen. Well, there have been scientists turning up dead in Russia and in, in Iran. There have been computer viruses. There have been problems at their facility. I hope that the United States has been involved with that. Maximum covert operations uh, to block and disrupt the Iranian program, uh, including uh, taking out their scientists, including breaking up their systems, all of it covertly, all of it deniable. Now, yeah, these are two guys with two points of views, but you can't deny the fact that they, they do speak out for some segment of this population. Uh, to say that we hope that this country would be behind tar targeted assassinations abroad, I mean, wh what's your take of that? Look, this is, uh, again, th this is part and parcel of, of what uh, unfolded after 9-11. Uh, certainly, it, it goes back to uh, years, years before. Uh, the, what happened on 9-11, but uh, this is basically uh, the, the way that you know, far-right conservatives see uh, U.S. foreign policy, uh, assass targeted assassinations, drone strikes, uh, nothing is truly off limits, and the rule of law means nothing to these people. And I want to very briefly, um, we're almost out of time, what's your prediction? I mean, if we're talking here 10 years down the line, where's this country going to be? Well, first of all, I don't think Guantanamo will close. Uh, I think Guantanamo will remain open. I think that we'll start to see uh, laws that uh, are implemented down the road that will uh, further strengthen, if you will, uh, the police state, which it sort of seems like we're, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're leaning toward. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very troubling. And I, and I think that people need to keep an eye on uh, these, uh, the, the reauthorization of these laws, particularly the Patriot Act, which right. will be coming up right. soon. Well, it's hard to keep an eye on uh, when these things happen seemingly behind closed doors and very quickly. And just for a point of reference, it took us 10 years to bring the first responders bill uh, in, into uh, effect. And of course, this NDAA passage was uh, signed very quickly and passed very quickly. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for the work that you do and for uh, taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you. Pleasure.